All right, so we've got a project to work with, and now it's time to get familiar with using the editor. Unreal Engine is a powerful piece of technology, and that can make it absolutely terrifying when you first load into it. I've had hundreds of my students over the years tell me that they wanted to learn Unreal Engine on their own, but as soon as they opened the editor, it was so overwhelming that they immediately just closed it and never came back. In this lesson, I'm going to teach you how to navigate the interface inside of Unreal Engine by showing you the six major elements you need to understand in order to get started. By the end of this video, you'll look back in awe at how easy it actually is to work with. All right, right off the bat, let's jump into the bread and butter of the editor, the viewport. This is the three-dimensional stage where you'll be building out your world. All of your models, characters, and everything else will exist within this stage, which Unreal refers to as a level. And we'll dive deeper into what that means in a later video. Now there are three different options for navigating the camera around the viewport. Option number one, the WASD method. This is actually my personal favorite method. Now, if you're familiar with PC gaming, you'll feel right at home with this one. What we're gonna do is hold down the right mouse button to activate this method, and while you're holding down that button, press W on your keyboard to move forward, press S on your keyboard to move backwards, press A to move left, and press D to move right. While holding down the right mouse button, you can also move your mouse to rotate the camera's look at direction around. Using a combination of rotating the camera and using WASD to move, you can get around anywhere. Option number two, the Unreal Method. This is the movement scheme that Epic developed in its earliest versions from back in the 90s. To use this, we can hold down the left click on the mouse and move your mouse up to move forward along a completely horizontal plane, or move your mouse down to move backwards along that same plane. Moving your mouse left and right will rotate the camera around. Holding down both the left and right mouse button at the same time, you can pan the camera around like this. And of course, just like with the WASD method, holding down just the right mouse button lets you rotate the camera's look at direction around. Keep in mind that using this method, the left click will always move along that horizontal axis regardless of where your camera is actually looking at in the vertical axis. To move towards your look at direction, you'll need to use the WASD method. Option number three, the Maya method. If you're used to working with 3D modeling software like Maya, this one is going to make a lot of sense to you. Holding down the Alt button on your keyboard or Option on a Mac, you can use the left mouse button to orbit around the center of your viewport. You can use the right mouse button to dolly in and out. And you can use the middle mouse button to pan around. Now one final thing that all of these different methods have in common is that you can use the scroll wheel to zoom in and out. The scroll wheel can also be used to control the speed of your camera movement by using it while you're actively in the process of moving using the WASD method. Now, I personally use all three of these methods depending upon what I'm doing at any given time. I tend to favor the WASD method, but there are times when I want to orbit around a specific area or I only want to move along a two-dimensional plane. Next, let's have a look at the second major element, the outliner. Over here to the right of the viewport and on top is the outliner. This is a list of all the assets that are currently in your level. This includes models, lights, blueprints, and everything else that make up a level. All of these things Unreal refers to as actors. So every actor in a scene will show up here. If we click on one of these actors in the list, you'll see it highlighted in the viewport. With an actor selected, if you hit F on your keyboard, it'll actually move your camera to that actor. This is called focusing an actor. And if you were unaware, this actually works in nearly all 3D software. So if you're a modeler or sculptor and didn't know this, go give it a try. You'll also see that many of these actors in the default scene are organized into folders. You can move these into a different folder by dragging and dropping it. Alternatively, you can right click and go down to move to and select an existing folder to move it to. New folders can be created in the move to dialog or by clicking this new folder button up here. All right, next we're going to look at the details panel. 
If we were to click on one of the items from within the viewport or in the outliner, you can see that the details panel gets populated with all kinds of parameters. What shows up here is largely dependent on the type of actor that you actually have selected. For example, with this cube selected, we can see options for things like the mesh, the materials, and the physics. However, if we come up here and click on this directional light, the details panel now gives us parameters to control things like the intensity, the color, and the source angle. We'll go deeper into what all of these parameters do on a specific actor type when we go over that actor type. For now, make note that all of the settings that you can change on an actor in a level will be found in this details panel. All right, the next interface element that we wanna look at is the toolbar. Located directly above the viewport, the toolbar contains several items that help you craft your world. This includes things like the editing mode. Unreal actually has several different editing modes that change the way your interface looks and behaves depending upon what mode you're in. Selection mode is where you'll spend probably 80 to 90% of your time. But there are other modes that allow you to work with things like landscapes, vertex painting, and even 3D modeling within the engine. We'll go over each one of these modes in detail in the full course. Next to the editing mode, we have the create button. This allows you to add specific kinds of actors into your level. Your options are organized neatly into folders, but once you click on this button, you can also just start typing to search what you need. The toolbar contains buttons for working with level-related blueprints, as well as a button for quickly creating sequences, which are how you work with cinematics in Unreal. The toolbar is also where you'll find your play in editor controls, which we'll go into that in a later video. But for now, just know that you can click the play button to drop in and play. And then you can hit escape on your keyboard to exit. Platforms and settings we'll go over later. Just above the toolbar, you'll find the menu bar. File, edit, help. This is all pretty standard fare like any other software. One thing I do want to point you to is the window option. This menu contains all of the various panels that Unreal Engine has. There are a lot of things in here that we'll go over in dedicated videos in the full course, but the important thing to note is that if you ever lose a panel, this is where you go to get it back. Let's say you accidentally close your details panel. To get it back, you would go to Window, Details, Details 1. Clicking on this pops it back into place. Notice that there are four details panels in the list. This can be useful if you ever need to have a second floating details panel. Also note that you can dock any of these windows anywhere by clicking on the title tab and dropping it into a spot. As they say with any kind of creative endeavor, content is king. Which is why our final and second most important interface element we're going to look at is the content browser. Now if you remember deconstructing the project folder in the previous video, I mentioned that the content folder was where the bulk of the project actually lives. The content browser is how we actually access that content inside of the editor. To access the content browser, we can go down here to the lower left of the viewport and click on this content drawer button. This will expand our content browser as a temporary drawer element. Clicking outside of it will make it go away. You can also use the shortcut key of control space or command space on a Mac to pull it up. Now, I personally like to keep my content browser up at all times when I'm deep into crafting a scene, which you can do by going over here and clicking on this dock in layout button. To the left, you'll see a hierarchy of the folder structure. And to the right, you'll see the contents of the folder that you're currently in. Since we started with the third person template and the starter content installed, you can see all the folders related to those in our content browser. Digging down into one of these folders, such as level prototyping, and then into meshes, you'll see some familiar looking 3D models. These are representative of the models that the starter level in our viewport is made from. At this point, the Unreal Engine interface should be a lot less intimidating. There are a lot more aspects to the interface that we'll cover in the full course, but just knowing how to work with these six major elements puts you over 50% of the way there to mastery over the interface. In the next video, we're gonna dive into adding and working with content. So we're gonna get real comfortable real fast with the content browser. I'll see you there.